Imagine. One and three are wrong, but I don't know why. Okay. Looks right. But no, I don't know why. Because like on the back of our... Are, are you sure you're supposed to put your answers in decimal or should you leave it in pi? My guess is you're supposed to leave it in pi. Well, it has it in both, and so I'm off on on one, and then on three, I'm I think I'm off. Because four thirds pi r cubed. Oh, three I did right, but one I did. Yeah, four thirds pi r cubed is the correct volume of a sphere. And you've got the correct radius of 12. Mm, how do you know you're wrong? Because it has the answers. It says, it says that it's 2,304 pi, but if you multiply what, or if you multiply 2,304 times 3.14. Hold on. 1728 times 4 divided by 3, that's 2,304 pi. That's what you've got here. Well, then why is it? Multiply the 4 thirds by the 1728. Go ahead. On your calculator. And your answer should be 2304 pi. So then why is it wrong when I multiply it by pi? I don't know. Um, so you're taking that answer and multiplying it by pi and getting what? Six well, thousand? I think I did the decimal part. Um. <laughs> well, first of all, I would never, without instructions, saying round to the nearest hundredths place or something, I would never give an answer not in pi. Okay. So don't even give the answer in anything but pi. It's 2304 pi. Okay. Now, why that does not convert to the right decimal that they have in the answer, I don't know. But it's immaterial. You should never convert pi to a decimal unless requested to do so. Okay. It's like not, it's like square root of two. You never convert that either. You always leave it square root of two or radicals. You always leave mm -hmm. it as radicals because that's the most exact answer. So then, can we do six? Because I did that. It's not right either. Yeah. What is six? Um, Trapezoidal prism. Yeah, mainly it's a prism, okay? Which means we're going to find the area of one base of that prism, that base right there. Mm -hmm. That can be the only base, notice. This can't be a base because it's not parallel to its opposite side. The top and bottom can't be a base because they're not the same. For something to be a prism, it has to have equal and opposite and parallel polygons. And that's a trapezoid. So I'm going to find the area of that trapezoid and multiply it by the thickness of the prism. Well, let's talk about the area of a trapezoid. There's a formula that's worth knowing for the area of a trapezoid. You can't always get away with dividing it into two triangles. So what's the area of that trapezoid? I don't know because we don't have the height. Oh, you're right. We don't have the height. Well, this is an isosceles trapezoid. Yeah. We know 
Ah, and we know that this side is 13. So to figure out the height, We've got 12. This, this side there is 5. This side here is 5 because it's an isosceles trapezoid. This mm -hmm. is 23. And that is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. Yeah. So now we have the height. So what's the general formula for the area of a trapezoid? Base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. Okay, so what's base 1 and base 2? 23 and 33. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh. Oh, allergies are just driving me crazy. So we have everything we need to get the area of that trapezoid, right? Mm-hmm. And now multiply it by its thickness. What is its thickness? 44. That's the volume of that prism. I did that. Twenty-three. That's fifty-six. Fifty-six times twelve. Six plus six. divided by two times twelve. So oh, I get that's three, good. I get 336. So I got, I just made a calculator mistake, I guess. Okay. Okay. What else? What next? We can just keep going. That's just as far as I got today in class. Okay. So seven is a cone. What is the volume of a cone, the general formula? Um, one third base times height. No, base times slant height. No, that's surface area. When you're talking the volume of a cone, it's the area of the base times the height. That would be the area or the volume of a cylinder, correct? Base times... Pi R oh, squared. In other words, the yeah. base is pi R squared, the height is H, a cylinder would be base times height. Well, when it goes to a point, you always lose two-thirds of it. So that's where the one-third comes from. In other words, if you started with a cylinder and shaved away everything you needed to shave away to make this cone you would have to shave away two-thirds of the material. And that's the way I remember this formula, is because it doesn't matter if it's a cone or a triangular pyramid or anything that goes to a point is going to be base times height divided by three. Okay. So we have to solve this triangle. If we look at this figure from the side, looks like this, where, excuse me, that's 60, that's 61. If we can solve for x, we're going to have everything we need. Um, okay. So. Solve for x. I think x is 2 or 3, or I think that's a perfect Pythagorean. In other words, it's all integers. Solve this right triangle. Um, that right triangle right there. Hypotenuse 61. It's 11. Okay. So now you got everything you need. Radius is 11. Height is 60. So then it's base pi r squared. Uh -huh. Okay. It's the vertical height, not the lateral height. The lateral height on a cone is only used when you're doing surface area, 
not falling. Wait, so it's not the slant height or it is the slant height? No, it is not. Slant height is only used when you're doing surface area, not volume. Divided by three. Uh-huh. So 20. So 420 pi? I didn't do it. I'm assuming you can fill this in with 11, square 11, multiply it by 60. Mm, okay, so I did pi 21, because 11 squared. Is 121. Oh, 121, huh? Oops. Well, I need to grab, uh, like, go on to the next year. Summer needs to come. Uh, Grand's not working. I kind of feel the same way. <laughs> Only I'm hoping summer comes so that I'll get rid of my allergies. Not so much because I've had enough math. All right. I'm just shutting down. We're good to okay, go to so eight? Off. Yes. Okay. Eight is also a prism. It's a hexagonal prism. So we need to figure out the area of that base. So then 8 equals 225, 22.5 times 6 times, oh, we have to find the base. The perimeter is 156, so divide that by 6 and you'll have a side length. Ah, hold on a moment. Don't do that. Wait, why? Remember, because there's two formulas for the area of a regular polygon. That's one of them. Oh, you, one Here's half. one that's actually better. E, right? Yeah, S times N is the perimeter. And since they give us the perimeter, let's use this. In other words, they give us the apothem and the perimeter. We can fill it in directly there and come up with the area. You could do it the other way because you can count and see that there are six sides. So we could take the perimeter and divide by six. <clears throat> I remember we once had a problem, though, where you couldn't tell whether there were six or seven sides, and they gave you the perimeter. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. I know it was you, because it was an honors geometry, and you're the only honors geometry I have right now. In other words, if they give you a figure where you can't tell how many sides there are, Let's say they draw it in such a way that you can't tell if there's six or seven sides. But if they give you the perimeter, you don't need the number of sides. You can fill it directly into that formula. And then, of course, you have to take that number and multiply it by 78. 1, 3, 6, 8, 9, 0. Oh. Okay. okay, now let's look, this one. Let's look at nine. Nine, we basically are looking, nine is an easier volume problem than it is a surface area problem. Because surface area is the only thing that touches, so if the top of that cylinder wouldn't count in surface area, but it does in volume? Yes. In other words, the volume is just the area of the cylinder plus the area of the cone. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, the surface area, you'd have to take the surface area of the cone, the surface area of the cylinder, and then subtract off two bases, because there's two bases that don't make up part of the surface area, the interface between the cone and the cylinder. So, let's see, can we figure out the radius? Yes, yeah. because the top triangle, or the top cone, that's 25. What's this measurement? 20. So 5, 4, 3. So Three, that's got to be 15. So the radius is 15. So your volume is one-third pi r squared times 20, the height, 
less pi r squared times 44, the height of the cylinder. And r is 15. So it actually looked like you knew how to do all nine of these problems, correct? Yeah, I just have to remember all the formulas. Well, but it seemed like you you knew how to do all of them. The only mistakes you made whatsoever were calculator mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, on every one we went through, you had done it properly except for a calculator mistake. And the toughest one of all was number three. Because they didn't give you the apothem. They gave you the radial sides. So you have to figure out that central angle, and based on the 6.9 centimeters, you have to figure out what the apothem is. Did you do all that? I don't see. Which one? Number three. Yeah, I did that. Okay. I don't see the angle. Let's see, that's a five-sided figure. Uh-huh. So what's the central angle? 172.5? No. No, that's just, the apothem is 6.9. Are you sure? Yeah, it says it. That's oh, what's written. Okay. I thought the radial line was 6.9. Oh, no, I did yeah, that line. Much harder problem. Because if they give you the radial line, then you have to figure out the central angle. In other words, 360 divided by 5 would be the central angle, which is 72 degrees. Then you take half of that, 36 degrees, to figure out the apothem. But if they say the apothem is 6.9, then you don't have to go through all of that. But that's as hard a problem as you could have, where they give you this, and they don't give you the apothem, but they give you the radial line because that requires you to figure out this angle. On the last one, what I do, wouldn't I do this, the circumference of the, the base, not the area to find? No. A right cylinder is base times height. It's a prism. All prisms are base times height. In other words, the bottom circle is the same as the top circle, and they're parallel. So we're going to take the area of the base and multiply it by the thickness of the prism, which is the height in this case of 44. Is your, is your review material, it's not the same as everybody else's, right? Yours is special for the honors geometry? Um, I think. I'm not for sure, though. Because I've been waiting all week for somebody to send me the review material for their geometry class. And one of my students actually canceled his appointment yesterday because he didn't have it yet. And I was just curious as to whether I can use this material for him. I think I could. I don't see anything on here that's that hard. Mm -mm. So it might be the same, but even if it wasn't, I, I can use this to get started with. if I've got students that don't have their review material yet. When is your final? It's on Thursday. Next um, week, Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Okay. Have you looked at your schedule with me to make sure you have everything the way you want it? I think I have all, um, I have you the next. I have you on half hour on Monday yes. and half hour on Wednesday. Just that. Now this week we have a session today, tomorrow, okay. Thursday, and Sunday. So we're doing two hours this week. Yeah. And one hour next. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Well, I'll find out because my next appointment is a geometry student and He'll either send me material or I'll use the material you just sent me to do our session with him. Yeah, I mean, he must have didn't do, like, 
Now they yeah. make polygons and apothems. And but am I not in the semi shirt? Like, I can, here, let me send you this next page. Okay. At least I'll have it for tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, volumes, like I said, volumes are much easier than surface areas. If they gave you these same nine problems, and actually they could, give you the exact same nine problems and say calculate the surface area, it would be much harder to do all nine of them. Um, for the formulas for like semicircles, semicircles three and circle or like a sphere is um, four, right? Well, the semi the semi sphere is just half of the sphere. So whatever the formula for a sphere is, divide it by two, and you get the semi sphere. And what this that makes is four sphere or two thirds. So it's two thirds pi r cubed if it's a hemisphere. Let's see. Did you send me some? Yeah, it should have delivered. Okay, hold on. I have to open this and go backwards on it. So is this all volumes again? Yeah, I don't see any surface area. Surely, no, we didn't see surely you area. Get surface area questions. Well, we did surface area yesterday. Uh, I see all these answers down here. Notice that one's in pi. Yeah, some of them are in pi. Okay. The ones that are not in pi, I'll bet anything they're not circular. Yeah, most likely. Number two is not circular, nor is three, nor is four, nor is five, nor is six. In other words, in none of these problems have they rounded off pi to 3.14 except number 19 where they ask you to use 3.14 for pi. But notice you only get pi when you have circular stuff. You don't get a pi when you have cubes or triangles or pieces of cheese like that. You only get pi when you have spheres and cones and hemispheres and objects like this, and so forth and so on. Is there any of these that you don't know how to do? How about number 10? Well, 10 is easy. You just do the, like, you set up the 3 whatever out of 360. Well, the it's, it's 3 quarters of a hemisphere, right? Yeah. Yeah. In other words, you figure the whole hemisphere, take 3 quarters of it because it's missing that 90 degree angle and that is one-fourth of 360. So one-fourth of the hemisphere is missing. So we would use the equation of a hemisphere or the equation of a sphere divided by two and then take three-fourths of that number. Um, maybe number 12? Well, let's just talk for a second about 11. The fact that that goes to a point means it's going to be one-third something. The fact that number 14 goes to a point means the volume formula is going to be one-third of what it would be if it was just a straight prism. 12, that's a prism. So all you need is the area of that semicircle times its thickness. That's the volume of that prism. And it looks like they give you the radius back there. It's hard for me to see it. But. And all of these other problems where they want you to find the indicated lengths, just start with the general formula, every one. In fact, if I could get geometry students to do one thing and one thing only, it would be that on every single problem. Start 
with the general formula. And then the general formula for 13 is base times width times height. Now you have an equation because they give you the volume. So the volume is equal to 17 times 8 times x. Now you have an algebraic equation to solve for x. And that's going to be the case on 13 through 18. Like I said, start with the general formula and then plug in everything that they've given you and solve for the unknown. All right, we can talk more about these tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to wait, that's fine. Uh, or you can get started on them. But I suspect you're pretty strong in this area. Yeah, volumes might use, like... Yeah, use you know what we maybe want to do? Um, has he given you all your review material yet? Sort of, I think. Well, we should go back and we should do surface areas on these same figures. Okay. Of course, this is all volumes, but we should do, as long as surface area is going to be covered on the test, and when you went over this material, you were always looking at volumes and surface areas. Mm -hmm. So it would be good practice, especially since you know how to do the volumes. I haven't really seen one problem yet that you didn't know how to do. Surface areas are tougher. Mm -hmm. Even the surface area of this thing here would be quite a bit tougher because you don't have a regular surface area of a hemisphere. You got a base, you got that little piece there, you got that little piece there. So surface areas are harder. And then when you have a cone, the surface area is pi r squared plus pi lambda, where you have a lateral slant height. Mm -hmm. You have lateral slant heights on these also that you had to figure out to do surface area. All right. Anyway, I'll let you go, Quaid. All right. Well, thank you. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.